So today for this video, I'm going to discuss about cell cycle and division. Cell cycle and cell division form the basis of life. Growth, regeneration, and reproduction depend upon cell cycle and cell division. Many cell cycles transform a single cell to a multicellular organism. Cell division is the process cells go through to divide. There are several types of cell division depending upon what type of organism is dividing. Different stages of cell cycle. The cell cycle is termed as cell cycle because the events repeat itself. After completing one complete round, the newly formed daughter cells begin the same process all over again. The two key phases of cell cycle are interphase and M phase or the mitotic phase. Every phase will be successfully activated on proper progression and completion of the previous phases. However, if a cell is temporarily stopped progressing or somehow stopped dividing, then the cell enter into another state termed as G0 phase, also called a state of quiescence. Interphase In this phase, the cell grows and produces a copy of the genetic material, DNA. Interphase can be further subdivided into three distinct phases, G1 phase, S phase or the synthesis, and G2 phase. The cell cycle begins after the division of mother cell into two new daughter cells. If the newly formed cells wants to move on, then it must divide itself. However, there are certain initial steps that occur before the actual division. In these phases, the new daughter cells prepare itself for the division. The interphase usually seems like a resting phase between the cell division but on contrary, it is a phase with a number of diverse activities. The duration of interphase may vary from 12 to 24 hours in the mammalian tissues. Subphases of interphase Gap 0 or G0 phase at times, the cell will leave the cycle and temporarily stop dividing. This is called a resting period. It can be for a short time or long more permanent period. For example, neurons are reaching the end stage of development, stop dividing and enter into a more permanent resting phase. Gap 1 or G1 phase It is also termed as the first gap phase. In this phase, the cell starts growing and enlarges physically. It forms the copy of organelles, produces all the necessary molecular building blocks such as RNA, and also synthesizes proteins that are essential in later stages. At this point, a control mechanism is activated to ensure proper DNA synthesis. The control mechanism is termed as the G1 checkpoint. S phase in this phase, a cell produces a complete copy of DNA in the nucleus to produce two similar daughter cells. DNA replication begins in the S phase or the synthesis phase. The microtubule organizing structure or centrosome is also copied in this phase. The centrosome is the structure that helps in dividing the DNA during M phase. GAP2 or G2 phase In G2 phase, the cell grows further produce proteins and organelles and start rearranging the constituents of the cell for mitosis phase. At the end of the G2 phase, another checkpoint is activated called as the G2 checkpoint. G2 checkpoint ensures everything is ready for division and M phase. The end of the G2 phase ends when the mitosis process begins. The M phase In this phase, the cell splits its DNA into two copies. Additionally, the division of the cytoplasm takes place thereby forming two daughter cells. M phase can be categorized into karyokinesis, the division of cell chromosomes, and cytokinesis, the division of cell cytoplasm to form new daughter cells. M phase is categorized into two distinct phases, mitosis and cytokinesis. 
In this phase, the cell divides the duplicated DNA and the cytoplasm into new daughter cells. Mitosis The cell's nuclear DNA is condensed into chromosomes. These visible chromosomes are pulled apart with the help of mitotic spindles, the special structures formed from mycotobules. Mitosis is further subdivided into four separate stages, including prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Cytokinesis begins after mitosis is complete. In this phase, the cytoplasm of the cell is divided into two daughter cells. Now, let us go on to cell division. Cell division stages are a series of events which occur during cell division and replication, depending upon the type of cell. Cell division can be of three different ways. First is the binary fission, second is the mitosis, third is the meiosis. In prokaryotic cells or cells without nucleus, cell division occurs through a process called binary fission. In eukaryotic cells or the cells with nucleus, cell division may occur through mitosis or meiosis. Further, depending upon the organism and the function of eukaryotic cell, cell division is of two types. Mitosis Mitosis is the simpler and more common type of cell division wherein one cell divides into two identical daughter cells. Meiosis, on the other hand, occurs only in sexually reproducing organisms. Here, one cell undergoes two successive divisions to produce four genetically different daughter cells. Prokaryotic cell division Prokaryotes replicate through a type of cell division known as binary fission. Prokaryotes are simple organisms with only one membrane and no division internally. Thus, when a prokaryote divides, it simply replicates the DNA and splits in half. The process is a little more complicated than this, as DNA must first be unwound by special proteins. Although the DNA in prokaryotes usually exists in a ring, it can get quite tangled when it is being used by the cell. To copy the DNA efficiently, it must be stretched out. This also allows the two new rings of DNA created to be separated after they are produced. The two strands of DNA separate into two different sides of the prokaryote cell. The cell then gets longer and divides in the middle. Eukaryotic Cell Division Mitosis the process of cell division that results in the formation of two new daughter cells is termed as mitosis. The newly formed daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell and to each other. It plays a crucial role in a living organism's life cycle. However, the level of significance may vary depending on the type of organism, multicellular or single cell. Five basic stages of mitosis First is the prophase. In this phase, the DNA supercoils. Chromatin fibers become coiled and condense into chromosomes. The chromosomes consist of two chromatids connected at the centromer. The microtubule spindle fiber starts forming at the opposite ends of the cell. The mitotic spindle is composed of microtubule proteins that slowly increase in length during the prophase which eventually initiate the cell division process by elongating it. Late prophase. Late prophase is also known as the prometaphase. The nuclear envelope dissolves. The microtubules composed of the spindle fibers move from the pole to the center of the cell, or the cell's equator. Kinetochores attach themselves to specialized microtubules called kinetochore fibers. Metaphase. In metaphase, the spindle entirely develops. The nuclear membrane dissolves completely. Polar fibers keeps on extending from the poles to the center of the cell. Chromosomes assemble and deassemble themselves and try to find the centromer of sister chromatids. The chromosomes arrange themselves in the metaphase plate at 90 degrees to the spindle poles. The polar fibers produce equal forces and push the centromer of the chromosomes, thus holding the chromosomes together at the metaphase plate. Anaphase. The pair of centromeres present in the chromosomes start to move away in this phase. The sister chromatids, paired chromosomes, separate and form a complete chromosome, also termed as daughter chromosome. The daughter chromosomes start moving towards the pole in the opposite ends through the spindle apparatus. 
the centromere moves first and gradually the kinetochorus decreases in length as the chromosomes move closer to the pole. The two cell poles migrate further away during the anaphase and prepare it for telophase. At the end of this stage, both the pole contains a complete set of chromosomes. Cytokinesis starts at this stage and continues through the next stage. The telophase. The polar fibers keeps on lengthening. Nuclei forms at the opposite end. Nuclear envelopes start developing from the leftover pieces of the nuclear envelope of the parent cell and from the endomembrane system. Nucleoli start reappearing. Chromatin fibers of the chromosomes unwind. At this point, the process of mitosis is almost complete and the genetic material of the parent cell is equally divided into two. Cytokinesis. The division of the cell cytoplasm is termed as cytokinesis. It starts before the anaphase stage and ends just after telophase. Two genetically identical daughter cells are formed after the end of cytokinesis. The new daughter cells are identical diploid cells. Each cell contains a full set of chromosomes. Meiosis. It is a specialized form of cell division in which a single cell is divided twice to form four daughter cells that possess exactly half of the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. Therefore, all of the four cells are haploid and will contain half the original amount of the genetic information. These cells are called sex cells, sperms in male whereas eggs in females. Stages of meiosis Meiosis can be majorly categorized into nine different stages as there are two divisions in meiosis. The two divisions are called meiosis 1, where the cells divide for the first time, and meiosis 2, where the cell divides for the second time. Meiosis 1 Prophase 1 In this stage, the sister chromatids or the chromosomes of the maternal set combines together with their homologs of the paternal chromosome set. The duplicated chromosomes condense and in combination, they look like two X's present next to each other. Metaphase 1 The chromosome sets arrange themselves next to each other along the equator of the cell. The meiotic spindle is positioned on both sides of the cell. At that time, the centrioles are present in the opposite ends of the cell and the meiotic spindle stretch for them. The meiotic spindle attaches to the combined sister chromatids. At the end of the metaphase 1, the fused sister chromatids are latched to the centromere and line up in the center of the cell. The homologs still represent X, sitting next to each other. Anaphase 1 The chromosome pairs are gradually pulled apart when the meiotic spindle fibers start to contract. As a result, one chromosome is pulled to one end of the cell and the other chromosome to the opposite end. Thus, each X-shaped structure moves away from each other towards the opposite pole. Telophase 1 and Cytokinesis In this stage, the chromosomes completely move apart and are present in the opposite poles of the cell. Each pole of the cell contains a full set of chromosomes arranged together. A membrane develops around each chromosome pair. At this point, the single cell splits in the middle to create two separate daughter cells by the process called cytokinesis. Each daughter cell is composed of a full set of chromosomes present inside the nucleus. At the end of meiosis 1, two daughter cells each having a full set of chromosomes are present. The genetic makeup of each newly formed cell is different because the DNA exchange taking place between the homologs earlier. The newly formed daughter cells enter to meiosis 2 without further duplication of the chromosomes. Meiosis 2 Prophase 2 after meiosis 1, there are two cells with the same number of chromosomes or the same number of chromatid pairs. The chromosomes in each daughter cell once again condense into visible X-shaped structure. The nuclear membrane around the nucleus of the daughter cells disintegrates releasing the chromosomes. The meiotic spindles start forming again and the centrioles duplicate. Metaphase 2 the pair of sister chromatids arrange themselves in line along the equator of the cell. The centrioles are now present at the opposite ends in each of the daughter cell. The developed meiotic spindle fibers at each end attach onto the centromere present in the sister chromatids of the cell. Anaphase 2 The meiotic spindle fiber starts contracting and the sister chromatids are pulled to the opposite ends. At this point, the chromatids are separated and they form individual chromosomes. 
Stella phase 2. The chromosomes finally move to the opposite ends of the cell. At each end or pole, an entire set of chromosomes are arranged together. Again, the nucleus membrane develops around each pair of chromosomes, and two new cell nuclei are formed. This marks the last phase of meiosis, but the cell division process remains incomplete without the cytokinesis process. So the cell undergoes cytokinesis, and after the process, four granddaughter cells are formed. Each newly formed cell contains half a set of chromosomes or haploid chromosomes. Each chromosome is distinct and unique. It is composed of a mix of genetic material from the paternal as well as paternal chromosomes of the original cell.